My name is Cynthia Park, and I'm telling the story of Ruth. In the days when the judges judged, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man, along with his wife and his two sons, left their home in Bethlehem of Judah and went to the land of Moab. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Machlon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites of Bethlehem. They went to the land of Moab, and they remained there. But Elimelech died, and the two sons took two Moabite wives named Orpah and Ruth. Altogether, they lived in Moab for about ten years. But then Machlon and Kilion died. And the woman was left without her husband and her sons. She started, though, to return to the land of Judah. For while she was in the land of Moab, she heard that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. And so she began her journey back to Bethlehem, accompanied by her two daughters-in-law. But then she said, return, each of you, to the house of your mothers. Do not go back with me. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. May the Lord grant you security in the house of each of your husbands. The women wept aloud and said, No, no, we, we will return to your people. But Naomi said, No, do I still have sons in my womb that, that they could become your husbands? I, I'm too old to even have a husband. But if I did, and if I bore sons tonight, would, would you wait for them to grow up? Would you refrain? From Mary? No. No, it, it has been far more bitter for me than for you. For the hand of the Almighty has turned against me. Then the women wept aloud again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to Naomi. Naomi said to her, Look, my daughter, your sister has returned to her family and to her gods. Go after her. But Ruth clung all the more, and she said, do not press me to leave you or to return from following after you. Where you go, I go. Where you stop for the night, I stop for the night. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, there will I be buried also. May the Lord do all this and more to me if even death separates me from you. When Naomi saw that Ruth could not be persuaded, they continued together to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was astir because of them. The women said, Is that Naomi? But 
And Naomi said, do not call me pleasant, call me bitter, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why would you call me pleasant? It was in this way that Ruth and her daughter-in-law, Naomi, returned to Bethlehem. They arrived at the beginning of the barley harvest. Now, Naomi had a certain kinsman of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. He was a rich and prominent man. One day, Ruth the Moabite said to her mother-in-law, Allow me to go out into the fields among the grain, gleaning behind someone in whose sight I might find favor. And her mother-in-law said, Go. So Ruth went out into the fields and was gleaning behind the reapers, and as it happened, she stepped over into the field belonging to Boaz. Just then, Boaz returned to the field from Bethlehem. He greeted his servants, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to the servant who was in charge of his reapers, To whom does that young woman belong? And his servant said, She is the Moabite who returned with Naomi, her mother-in-law. She asked if she might glean behind the reapers and she has been there since early this morning. She has not rested even once. Boaz said to her, Listen, my daughter, do not leave this field or, or go into another field, but stay with my young women. Keep your eyes on the field that is being gleaned. Do not leave them. I have ordered my young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, you may drink from the vessels that they have drawn. Then Ruth fell prostrate on her face and said, Oh, my Lord, how is it that I have found favor in your sight when I am a foreigner? But Boaz said, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me. How you left the house of your father and your mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know. May the Lord reward you and may you receive a full reward from the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have taken refuge. But Ruth said, May I continue to find favor in your sight, for you have dealt compassionately with your servant and spoken kindly to your servant, even though I am not one of your servants. At mealtime, Boaz said to Ruth, Come over here and, and taste some of this bread and, and dip your morsel in this sour wine. So Ruth came, but she sat beside the reapers. But Boaz heaped up parched grain for her, and she ate, and she ate, until she was satisfied and, and she had some 
left over. When she got up to return to the fields, Boaz warned his servants, do not reproach her, but allow her to glean even among the standing sheaves. In fact, take some handfuls from the bundles and leave them for her to glean. Do not rebuke her. And so Ruth gleaned in the fields until late that evening. And when she had beat out all that she had gleaned, it was about an ephah of barley. So she loaded it on her back and, and she returned to Bethlehem and to her mother-in-law. When her mother-in-law saw all that she had gleaned and Ruth had given her from what she had left after she was satisfied, Naomi said to Ruth, where did you work today and, and in whose field did you glean? And Ruth told her where she had worked and in whose field she had gleaned. And Ruth said, the name of the man is Boaz. And Naomi said, blessed be the Lord who has not forgot the living or the dead. This man is our redeemer. He is our next of kin. So then Ruth told her that Boaz said to her, remain with my servants and with my women until the end of the harvest. And Naomi said, I, I think it is good that you remain with his women and, and in his field. If, if you went to another field, you, you might be bothered. And so Ruth remained with the servants and the women of Boaz until the end of the barley and the wheat harvest. And she continued to live with her mother-in-law. Then Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, I must seek some security for you. Now, here is our kinsman, Boaz. Tonight, he will be at the threshing floor winnowing wheat. Go, bathe yourself, anoint yourself, and put on your finest clothes. And then tonight, go to the threshing floor. Do not make your presence known. Wait until he has had his fill of food and wine. Take note of where he lays down, and then go to him and uncover his feet. He will tell you what to do. Ruth said, all that you have said, I will do. So that night, Ruth went to the threshing floor, but she hid until Boaz had had his fill of food and wine, and she saw where he went to lay down behind a pile of grain. And then she stealthily made her way to him, and she uncovered his feet, and she lay down beside him. At about midnight, Boaz turned over, and when he saw her, he said, Who is this? And she said, It is I, Ruth. Spread your cloak over me, for you are my next of kin. Boaz said, 
May the Lord be praised. This last act of your loyalty is better than the first. For you have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. All that you have said, I will, I will do. Um, remain here tonight. Do not be afraid. The whole assembly of my people know that you are a woman of virtue. And although it is true that, that I am your relative, there is one who is nearer to you. Tomorrow, if he will act as next of kin for you, then good. Let him do it. But if he will not, then as the Lord lives, I will act as next of kin. But, but stay tonight. And so Ruth lay back down. But she got up early in the morning before one could recognize another, for he said, no one must say that a woman came to the threshing floor. Then he said to Ruth, bring me the cloak that you were wearing, and she handed it to him. He filled it with about six measures of barley and, and put it on her back, and, and she returned to Bethlehem and to her mother-in-law. When Naomi saw Ruth, she said, How did it go, my daughter? And Ruth told her all that had happened, and then she, she showed her the six measures of barley and said, He told me I should not return to my mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said to Ruth the Moabite, Wait, my daughter, until you see how this matter turns out. For this man will not rest until the matter is settled today. That morning, no sooner had Boaz gone up to the gate of the city and sat down then the next of kin of whom he had spoken to Ruth came walking by. And he said, Friend, come, sit here. Then he took ten men from the elders of the city and said, Please, sit, sit here. Then he said to the next of kin, Naomi intends to sell the parcel of land belonging to our relative Ellie Melech. I thought I would tell you about it in case you wanted to redeem it. But if you do not want to redeem it, tell me, for there is no one before you and, and I come after you. But the man said, I will redeem it. Boaz said, Know this, the day you acquire that parcel of land from the hand of Naomi, you also acquire Ruth, the widow of the dead man, to raise up an inheritance for his name in the gate of the city. And the man said, I cannot raise up an inheritance for him. It would, it would ruin my inheritance. No, no, I, I can't redeem it. You redeem it. Now, this was the matter in those days in Israel of redeeming and confirming a transaction. To confirm a transaction, a man would take off his shoe and give it to another man. So the next of kin took off his shoe and gave it to Boaz. And Boaz said, You are my witnesses this day that I have acquired the field belonging to Naomi. And I have also acquired everything that belonged to Elimelech 
and to Machlon and Kilion. I have also acquired Ruth, the wife of Machlon, to be my wife. You are my witnesses. And all the people said, we are your witnesses. May the woman you bring into your house this day be like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May she give you children in Ephrathah and bestow a name in Bethlehem. And through the children that the Lord will give you by this woman, may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. And so Boaz took Ruth as his wife. And when they had come together, the Lord caused her to conceive and she bore a son. And the women said, Blessed be the Lord God, who has not left you this day without next of kin. May his name be renowned in all of Israel. To Naomi they said, This child will be a nourisher of life a restorer of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, Ruth, who is better than ten sons and who loves you, has borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid him in her arms, and she became his nurse. And then the women of the neighborhood gave the child a name, for they said, The Lord has granted a son to Naomi. And they called him Obed. And Obed was the father of Jesse. Now, these are the generations of Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron, who was the father of Ram, who was the father of Aminadab, who was the father of Nachshon, who was the father of Solomon, who was the father of Boaz, who was the father of Obed, who became the father of Jesse. And Jesse became the father of David. 